This video, How to Plant Milkweed for Monarchs from Seeds or Starts, was uh, made by the talented Carol Bray, and we're so grateful to her for donating her time to make it. Uh, and also grateful to Pete Bayou for having us to his nursery and um, starring in this video. And actually this uh, young woman here, this is my daughter, Kelly. Uh, and the script was written by our very own Jennifer Jerking. Hi, I'm Kelly, and I'm here to learn how to plant narrowleaf milkweed, which feeds the Western monarch caterpillar. You probably already know that milkweed is the only plant monarch butterflies can lay their eggs on. I'm so glad you could join me. And today, I'm here with Pete. Hi, Kelly. Welcome to Hi. East Bay Wilds. Today, we're going to plant some narrowleaf milkweed. That, that's the one that is native to this area, uh, around the Bay Area. This is what we use here in the nursery for planting seeds. This is, and these are the narrow leaf milkweed seeds, or larner seeds. Yeah, we're going to drop a few into each of the holes, into the, each of the divots here, the holes. Um, it doesn't matter if you have a few, they can grow together or they can grow alone. It doesn't matter. But um, if you put more than one, then you're, to, you're ensuring that you're going to get more of them, you're, that more of them will take. Because not all seed takes. And just drop in a few in each one. And when they grow, if they grow, to, if you get several growing together, it's no problem. You can just uh, they can grow together and they'll just form multiple plants together or you can divide them if you like. When they're, oops, get some in each of the little divots. What I like to do is I like to do two rows at a time. So the top two rows, then I'll do the next two rows. This until we're all full. Okay, and then to, to top them off, we just run our hand across it like this. Like this. And then we're going to, can you pass me that spray bottle? Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then we're gonna make sure that they're nice and moist. It's important to keep them moist for the first few months, really, um, that you're growing them. These, we're gonna put these out in the sun. I like to use them, I like to put them in full sun or, or, or you can put them in bright shade, but you've gotta remember to water these. They should be watered twice a week, sometimes three times a week when it's really hot. The best times to plant these are here in the Bay Area are between June and August. They come up fastest then, but you can plant them at any time of the year. Just at certain times of the year, so you're gonna have to wait longer for them to come up. So then once they're nice and moist like this, we're gonna put them out in the sun, okay? I like to label everything too. And then once they're nice and moist and you put them out in the sun, then I'm gonna give them another bit of water. Um, and then we're gonna let them germinate. And in the, between June and August, they, if you plant them between June and August, they're gonna come up pretty quickly within a few weeks. Um, if you plant them in, in the winter time, you'll have to wait a little bit longer. But I always suggest planting them after January. It's, um, they'll, they're coming up, you'll get better take that way. If you plant them before then, you'll probably lose a few. And what about these pots here? Yeah, you, know, you don't have to use just the seed trays. You can use practically anything as long as you have good drainage. These pots here are thrown away all the time. These are four inch nursery pots that people dump at our nursery all the time. Um, so we can just plant in these too. And a few. Sure. So what we'll do is we make divots with it. You can just use your finger and I'd put a few in there, put a few in each of these holes. 
I put four in a pot, four little holes, and like this. We'll take a little bit of soil, put it over the top, because these are not the same as the seed tray. So we're going to go like this. But you just want to make sure that in your pot that you're di that you don't fill them to the brim. Okay, you want to have them. You want to have them just really about half an inch to three quarters of an inch down from the edge of the pot, so that you have room for water and you won't be washing things away. So there. Okay, could you pass me that knife? Mm -hmm. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna show you how to pot the plants up. Because when these ones grow, they're gonna be really tiny and they're gonna get lost in the landscape if you put them right into the ground from here. So you wanna pot them up to a bigger size. This one has been potted into a four inch, um, but we're gonna put it into a gallon to get it nice and big, make it easy to, to plant, so. this and this should be nice when you turn it over it should be nice and full of roots just like that Oops, take a little more out pass me that pot please mm -hmm. yeah I'm gonna put it in a one gallon pot pack some soil around it but still with the with a one gallon pot you want to leave about one inch at the top the the soil should be one inch down to make sure you have plenty of room for water and you're not washing the soil off the roots and with these pots here you want to put you can put these up into gallons as well and you want to use a knife like this or you can even use a butter knife and you put it down into one side and then you put pressure on it and pull up pull pressure on it and pull up like that and then it will pop right out and you can just pop it right down into a one gallon pot. Okay, so we're ready to plant. We're gonna pull the mulch back. And it's a nice sunny open area. And I like to plant three to five plants together. You wanna have plenty of leaves for those hungry caterpillars to eat. And we're gonna make the holes. And you wanna dig the soil up a little bit around, you want to get it nice and loose so that the roots can move around and get down in there deeply. Make the hole much bigger than the, than the pot first. And then, um, then this is a very important part, especially in the summertime, but really any time of the year. Kelly, do you have some water? What we want to do is we want to fill this hole with water and let it drain through so you can Go ahead and fill it, if you like. Put it all the way. Okay. Now we're gonna just let that drain through for a minute. It goes pretty quickly here. We're doing this. The reason why we're filling this with water three times is that we have a good column of moist soil to point the roots downward. And that's what you want. The way that our plants, all of our California plants, become very drought tolerant is that their roots are down in there deep where th where the soil stays moist almost all year long um, and then and this is ensuring that good column of moist soil underneath the plant and not just with milkweeds you do this with all plants that you plant especially in the summertime then you have to sometimes in heavy 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 clay which there's a few places around the bay like danville that has super heavy adobe clay this takes all day <laughs> You have to fill it with water, but you still have to do it three times to get that good column of moist soil underneath. Um, so. I want to mention the aphids. I get a lot of calls about aphids, the milkweed aphids, and they're these little orange aphids, little orange bugs that you'll see. And in summertime, they always come and they can really, really, they, they are very disturbing for people. And I get a lot of calls around this time of year from people saying, that their milkweeds are getting all eaten by aphids. It's part of the natural cycle now in here in the Bay Area. Um, so, and they're these little orange bugs and they do disturb the plant, but, um, but not too much.
so. Okay, now that we've filled the hole with water three times, the, the third time we can plant, it's the water still there, but we're gonna plant right through it. It's still draining, but we're gonna plant right through it. So you take and you pop the plant out of the pot like this. And if there's a lot of roots around the edges, you wanna take it and bang it like that and a few times around to break it up a bit, break up the soil, uh, break up the roots a little bit. Then you wanna plant it so that it, it, the level in the pot remains the same as the level in the ground. Okay, so this level is gonna be exactly even with the soil around it. And then we're gonna backfill with the soil. Like this until it's packed in around there. Yeah, the soil, yeah, the soil does not need any amendments at all, but it does need, you know, you can use compost if you'd like, um, or you can just, um, you know, the soil is fine just as it is. Milkweed uses very little nutrient. So you just backfill it, make sure it's good and packed in there, okay, and then you want to pull the mulch back, but not right to the plant. You can give it a couple inches all around, like this. You don't want to, you, you don't want to, to, to um, put the mulch on the ground. You want plenty of room for the plant to breathe, okay, but the mulch does really help because it helps maintain the moisture, and it actually adds the right kind of nutrient to the soil over time. It adds humic acid to the soil. Yes, and it also keep, regulates the, helps to regulate the temperature of the soil. And we do this, we're, we're just doing one right now, but normally I would plant at least three of these together because you want to have plenty of leaves for the caterpillars to eat. If you only have a little bit of leaf for them to eat, you're going to lose some of them. They're going to eat it all up and they're not going to have anything else and they're going to be die, they're going to die off. So you want to have plenty of leaves. So I always plant three or five of them together to get a good patch. And then I water it, you know, regularly for the first year, for the first summer, I water it like once a week. Um, and then after the first summer, I let, let it be. I let it do its thing. But that gives you, that will make it double, triple in size in the first summer. And then you can leave it and the next year it'll be on its own. Why don't you give it some more water, Kelly? So Pete, how long does it take to grow? Remember that in the summertime, it's all, it, it, it's green like this. And then when the aphids come, the aphids do eat it down, but it's okay because they go deciduous anyway. By the end of the summer, the beginning of winter, it's gonna disappear. And, but have faith, it comes back. It comes back in the spring. Sometimes, a, in, it, sometimes it takes till June for them to come back in. That's good, it's enough water. But one of the reasons why you wanna use the fascicularis or the most local native one um, to where you are is that um, they, they do die back. It's important that they die back so, so that the tropical ones that stay evergreen actually can transmit diseases, which we don't want. So where can I get these seeds? There's several places. The ones that we planted are from Larner Seeds, um, but there are a bunch of commercial places where you can get them. And there'll be links in the caption of this video for you to get find one. You want to help me? Okay, pull the, pull the mouse back. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was terrific. I want to thank Carol Bray for making that video. Uh, Pete Veyu for allowing us to come over to East Bay Wilds to video it there. And uh, my daughter Kelly for participating in it. Um, and Jennifer for writing the script and coming over on the day of the filming. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining us.